Hi, if you're watching this video, you're probably interested in about ozone and perhaps interested in buying a unit to use at home. And if you are, you are on the right track because using ozone at home can be very beneficial, especially for those who have Lyme disease and who are trying to boost their immune systems. There's a lot of misconceptions, so let's just talk about some things that I feel are very basic but, but very important to mention. There's three different ways to produce ozone. There's cold plasma technology, which was invented by Tesla. There is the use of bulbs. And then there is what's called corona discharge. Corona discharge is the only one of the three methods that produces a positive ion. Not good. So we're really looking at two methods for using ozone. I mean, producing ozone. Cold plasma is usually used in the medical field because they need high concentrations very quickly and they're very expensive. Cold plasma technology is pretty expensive. You're looking at units that are starting at around $2,000 all the way up till to $10,000 and you see these usually marketed to medical professionals. Then there's the use of bulbs. There's little misinformation out there. I've read things that bulbs only produce one to three parts per million. Here I have a machine that uses a bulb, it's quartz crystal glass, and what's interesting is um, at any given moment it's producing 20 parts per million to 108 parts per million. Parts per million is the exact same number when it's in micrograms, micrograms per milliliter, which is usually the lingo that's used among people in the ozone medical world micrograms per milliliter. So if I say par parts per million, I really mean micrograms per milliliter. It's interchangeable. So those are the three different ways of producing it. I would stick to the plasma or the bulb. The bulbs can produce quite a bit of ozone and it literally depends on the type of bulb that's being used, the size of the bulb, and also the design of the actual unit. Because to increase exposure, which means to increase the concentration, you have to get your airflow right. So a lot of it is strong airflow, but also airflow that's very slow. Because once it's slow, you're able to oxygenate and ozonate that, that air that passes through there even better. So I said parts per million, 20 to 108, which is quite a bit. But there's also misconceptions about people needing really high amounts of ozone. And I needed to bump these really quickly. Medical professionals consider 50 parts per million to 90 parts per million when they're using autohemotherapy um, with patients. This amount of ozone creates what's called a shock effect. They call it a shock treatment. When you get into the higher parts of ozone, 80, 90 parts per million, you're dealing with a situation that could be not so healthy. So when you get high, high exposure, you have what's called a blood crippling or what's called a blood curling effect. So literally the red blood cells that get exposed will curl. This is really not good. So medical professionals really need to be the ones that are handling autohemotherapy. Please do, do not even attempt to do that at home. But there's lots of fun things that you can do at home with the unit. And this is where some of the myths come in. So I've, I've read people write about how one part per million, two part per million, three part per million, how these really small units of ozone are not beneficial at all. And that is just a bunch of baloney. Low ozone exposure, when it's used like as an insufflation, for example, is really, really great at modulating the immune system and there's lots of literature that you can look up about the use of very low ozone concentrations. So please do not think that lots of ozone is somehow going to miraculously make you better. It, what it will do for sure is make you sick. So you have to be very careful, you have to be very mindful when you're using it. It, it would be just like using a drug. 
you have to know what you're doing and have to be very careful. So about the concentrations, this is 20 parts per million to 108 parts per million at any given time, which is quite a lot. I've had people ask me, will it use a tank? I did not want to get into using a tank. They're expensive, they're cumbersome, it's a pain in the ass, to be honest. But the biggest problem with me is that if this thing is producing so much, if I put a tank on it, we're talking about five times the amount of what is coming out right now. And that 20 part per million to 108 part per million right now is at altitude. That's right. So we're using ambient air to produce ozone and we're at 20 to 25 percent less oxygen right here where we're doing testing. So you can do the math on that, but most people live at sea level. Most people don't live at 7,000 feet. So it's quite high and the concentration is already high enough. So that was something I decided not to do. The idea that it has to be pure um, oxygen to have a good healthy treatment, I disagree with that too. If you look at the literature, especially German literature, they use ambient air for certain types of treatments. and Enemas and insufflations are treatments that they, they will use ambient air to produce their ozone with. I think when you get into autohemotherapy and you're literally putting ozone into your blood, that's when you really want to get the cold plasma and use a tank. But for at home, uh, I would go with something that has a pretty medium concentration range like this. and to be very mindful of time. So basically, if you want more ozone, you're going to expose yourself longer. So time is critical. So some of the other factors that come into play for uh, figuring out what your exposure is to ozone is altitude, so how much oxygen is in the air at what altitude, time, if you want more ozone, expose yourself longer, Concentration, as in what's the concentration coming out of here. Flow rate, how is, the, how is the actual air being processed. And then, um, what's another one? Oh, there's got to be a few other ones. Temperature. Temperature, the colder it is, the more ozone this thing's going to be producing. And the warmer it is, the less it's going to be producing. So, I made it real simple. All you have to do is turn this button on and it turns on. I will explain um, some of the parts. It's all stainless, uh, all the parts that come into contact with the ozone and the UV are either silicone or stainless, medical grade stainless steel 314 or 304. So even the swedge lock at the top is stainless steel. So basically you're getting materials that aren't going to degrade over time, which is really important because it means that you can use your unit for a long, long time. And as far as things breaking, um, we've got it designed so that even if you need to replace a bulb, you're talking about maybe a hundred dollars at the most, and that's pretty awesome. The bulbs are supposed to last 9,000 hours. However, I probably would get the bulb changed out every two years or every year. And um, the bulbs are biotech ones that are um, coated so they don't lamp scale. Lamp scale is this not so great thing that happens when a bulb produces too much nitrogen. And um, ours are coated, which is awesome. So it's really easy if you don't know how to use a quick release valve basically we have these silicone tubes which is another uh, it's a grade A uh, UV resistant product and you push that hose all the way in and when you want to release it you just press and pull out but if you're not getting bubbles it means you need to press this tube in more then all you do is just turn it on that's it so I like to reuse things and this right here is a uh, coconut nectar bottle but you can, I like to put my oils in here and I like how it, uh, I like the shape of the bottle. I like how it bottlenecks so basically you can hold in some of that air a little bit more and you can ozonate quicker but oil
Soil really retains ozone very, very well, especially when it's kept climate control, like in a refrigerator. It can last for weeks, even months. Um, this is another, uh, this is just a milk bottle. I filled it up with water. It's about half a liter. And the same thing. You would just change this out, this piece. You have a separate piece for, you have a separate piece for oil and a separate piece for um, using water and you would just remove that piece. And th what, basically what this is is glass, um, is bonded glass, so you've got a very healthy um, array to use, which is awesome, or diffuser you can call it. And um, you just put it down at the bottom, turn it on. And for something this size, I probably would ozonate it about 40 minutes. If you're doing a full gallon, I would do about an hour and a half. Just remember, the longer you ozonate it, the higher the concentration. And you also need to be aware of the fact that just because, let's say, for example, this thing is coming out at 50 parts per million, it does not mean that this is going to be 50 parts per million. It does not translate like that. So it's very hard to figure out what concentrations you're getting once you start ozonating different oils or water. Um, so one of the best ways of using ozone from what I hear these days um, is basically just direct. Um, you can do ozonated enemas, you can drink ozonated water, especially if you have a stomach flu. It's like it's just amazing how well it works. And you can ozonate olive oil, uh, which is amazing and you can take um, you can take that every day as an antimicrobial. But what comes out of here is pretty strong. It's like really annoying, <laughs> annoyingly strong. But uh, just with this tube, you can do air insufflations, ladies. Atomically speaking, you have a little bit of a leg up because you have a vagina, <laughs> and you can do vaginal insufflations, which are amazing. And uh, from what I hear, a lot of doctors are actually giving rectal insufflations in their offices so you can actually do that at home but knowing that this produces so much ozone you would start out with about 30 seconds no more than that call it a day for any given treatment and then you could basically work up to about two minutes but again I would just be very mindful because you could really make yourself sick and you don't have to make yourself sick to get well. I mean, this is the whole idea. It's about lifestyle. So having something like this is a lifestyle changer. If you have kids that are sick, just ozonate them. If you have um, sinus infections, ozonate water and do a neti pot. If you feel like you're getting ready to get the flu, you know what I'm talking about. Like something doesn't feel right. It's right before you know everything gets really bad. You can breathe in ozone. So some people say you need to bubble it through oil to make it safe. I take a few breaths directly and it usually just knocks out anything I've come into contact with. So it's a nice thing to have, a lifestyle changer. So if you have questions about ozone, if you need help, just ask. And um, I, I hope you enjoy this unit as much as I've enjoyed mine. And I look forward to serving you. Take care and have a great day.